Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point, the network, the American Family Radio Talk Network. Don't forget about the Military Bible Stick program. We're joining with the good folks at MilitaryBibleStick.com this week to put an audio copy of the New Testament in the hands of every man and woman in uniform that wants one. These are a Bible stick that's not much bigger than a pack of gum. It's very sturdy. It's made to military specs. It's a portable. It's small. They can take it with them wherever they go. It's the entire New Testament done in dramatic version on digital recording, so they can take it with them wherever they are. We've got requests from a lot of men and women in uniform asking their chaplains for these. We've got sailors asking for them, uh, soldiers, airmen, Marines asking for them. We want to get the Word of God into the hands of our troops so they have the spiritual armor they need as well as the military armor that they need. So it's Military Bible Stick. You can help out 25 bucks. We'll put one Military Bible Stick in the hands of a soldier. Go to call 800-800-2555, 800-800-2555, or go to militarybiblestick.com. A couple of interesting items to start this hour. Uh, interesting a study done by the Salgrenska Academy at the University of Gothenburg. I think that's in Sweden. And they determined that when a choir sings, and think about this when you're talking about being in a church choir, being part of a worship team, or even being part of a, con- a congregation where you worship on Sunday, when a choir sings, members not only synchronize their voices and breath, but new research shows their hearts beat at a similar pace as well. They evaluated the heart rhythms of 15, 18-year-old high school students as they hummed, as they sang a Swedish hymn, and as they chanted a slow mantra. Here's what the study's lead author said. Singing regulates activity in the so-called vagus nerve, which is involved in our emotional life and our communication with others, and which, for example, affects our vocal Uh, Timber. In other words, through song, we can exercise a certain control over mental states. And it leads to the synchronized uh, heart rhythm. So it's a way for God's people not only to get their minds in sync with each other, but literally to get our hearts in sync with our brothers and sisters in the faith. And we've talked uh, before about the fact that the main threat to religious liberty now is the homosexual agenda. We've got to fight this. We've got to contest every square inch they want to take. We've we got to fight this to the last ditch, ladies and gentlemen, because this is the fate of religious liberty hinges on whether we can beat back the homosexual agenda. We are involved in a culture war, and the stakes are very, very high. Here's a story, Todd Starnes, townhall.com. A 27-year veteran of the Utah Air National Guard said he was reprimanded after he wrote a letter objecting to a gay wedding. He didn't have a protest. He didn't organize a rally. He wrote a letter to a superior officer to register a personal complaint. And for that, he's been reprimanded, and his military career is basically finished because he objected to a gay wedding at the West Point Chapel. He was later told to prepare for retirement because his personal beliefs about homosexuality were not compatible with the military's policies. Now, his attorney said the military is trying to make examples of people who have religious beliefs that homosexual conduct in the military is wrong. The end game is to force conservative Christians out of the military. And we talked, we we played the soundbite yesterday from Robert Oscar Lopez saying, look, what the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell has done is it's opened the door for these hyper-masculine homosexuals to come into the military, very similar to the kind of masculine ideal of the warrior in Greek culture, and they were homosexuals. Those that were the, the, the masculine ideal in Greek was the Greek warrior. He was a homosexual. They would often have young boys as their homosexual uh, lovers, and you would have these homosexual couples that would fight together, the 300 at Sparta. Now, that movie was made about them. They were 150 pairs of homosexual lovers. So there's a military tradition that's connected to homosexuality, and it's also connected to fascism. I won't take time to go over the story, but there was a piece that was published on the Huffington Post by a homosexual guy by the name of Johann Harry, and he said homosexuals have been at the heart of every fascist movement for the last 3,000 years, including 
the gay gassing homicidal Third Reich. So even he said, look, homosexuals were at the heart of the Nazi surge in the 1930s and uh, 40s. And so what's happening now, and this is the thing that ought to alarm us, what's happening now is Christians are being moved out of the United States military so hyper-masculine homosexuals can move in, similar to the kind of homosexuals that formed Hitler's stormtroopers. Here's what Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Tobias said in response to this letter. You are hereby reprimanded. Uh, and remember, when he was writing this, it was back at a time when the Defense of Marriage Act was still the law of the land. This was before the Supreme Court decision. In addition to his reprimand, the Air National Guard terminated a six-year re-enlistment contract and instead gave him a one-year re-enlistment. Here's what Tobias said to the attorney. We talked about his feelings about don't ask, don't tell, and how he doesn't agree with it. I then told him maybe this is a good time for him to move on because we've been ordered. Listen to this. We have been ordered to not have an opinion about gays in the military. That's a direct order. You cannot have a personal opinion about gays in the military. And he said, I'm not comfortable re-enlisting him with his strong feelings about the matter. So they tore up a contract. A contract is a contract. And that's part of his complaint. Look, this was an executed contract, signed, sealed, and delivered. They just went in, tore it up, and his own crime was registering an opinion that gay marriage in a military chapel was a violation of federal law. So once again, uh, that's something we ought to all be concerned about, this concerted effort to remove Christians from the military and move hypermasculine homosexuals in. That is what's taking place in the military today. Uh, we've been following the story down in Texas. The Texas State Senate is taking up now. It's been passed out of a Senate committee, so the full uh, Texas State Senate is going to be taking up the bill, the pro-life bill there that would prohibit abortions in the state of Texas after uh, 20 weeks. And it turns out that 63.1% of the babies that are aborted in the state of Texas are Hispanic or black. What you have here is you have genocide. This is genocide being waged by Planned Parenthood and other abortion clinics against the Hispanic and black races. In fact, the number of black and Hispanic babies aborted in Texas last year is more than the entire population of the city of Galveston. And blacks are being aborted at twice the rate of blacks in the state's population. 12.3% of the people in Texas are black, but 24.8% of all the babies aborted in Texas are uh, black. And this fits with Margaret Sanger. In 1932, she published a book or published a piece in Birth Control Review entitled A Plan for Peace. One plank in her peace plan was this, quote, to apply a stern and rigid policy of sterilization and segregation to that grade of population whose progeny, she's talking about blacks here, whose progeny is already tainted or whose inheritance is such that objectionable traits may be transmitted to offspring. we got to stop them from having babies. Genocide against the black population. Planned Parenthood. Focal Point AFR Talk. <laughs> 